got a new guy coming in the morning and uh, I'm gonna be giving him a try, see what he's doing. Got me thinking about leadership, how I need to be there before him. I need to set an example for him, see how he's doing. We're gonna be working on this job that I just got. That tree's broke up, hanging in this tree, which is uprooting, the ground's pulling up back here. So a couple of big trees to take down, but thinking about leadership and thinking about a man I mentioned in the last video I talked about, Steve Walker. And also if I'm gonna be telling these stories, I probably should be upfront with you about something. I, I actually speak three languages. I speak line work, I speak tree work, and I speak English, but I'm only fluent in two of those languages. So sometimes I'll say words that don't make sense unless you were in the trade. But back when Hurricane Katrina blew through, I was in New Orleans for quite some time working. And uh, when the work kind of slowed down in New Orleans as a tramp lineman, you kind of go where the money was at. And I was working for Steve and Steve came and told us we were going to Beaumont, Texas. That's where they were gonna work us seven days a week, which is what you're after when you're on the road. Because if you're not working, you're sitting in your room or you're sitting at a bar. So you want hours. Now the problem with Texas is, is the wages are lower in Texas than they are in New Orleans. So, it's a catch-22, but if you're on the road anyways, you, you might as well work seven days a week for a lower wage and higher hours. So we work seven days a week, 16 hours a day. So it's kind of one of those situations. There's more money to make per hour in New Orleans, but you're going to make more money per week working in Texas. So it's, uh, you know, a fast uh, nickels better than a slow dime. So anyways, off to Texas we go. Well, when you move places, you go to work, you got your bags and all your clothes stay on your truck, so they move you over. So we roll into Beaumont, we start working right when we get there. We start driving in the morning, we get to Beaumont, we start working. And then it's Steve's job to go see where we're staying and accommodations and food and all that while we, we build power lines. So I try to make these stories as short as possible, but there's details. So anyway, so Steve, catches us and takes us to feed and and then he takes us to where we're staying and where, where they got us up at is this uh it was like a ymca or some big gymnasium huge place and oh i don't know i don't remember the exact number i'm gonna say there was 500 men there well that day the tree trimmers they finished work before us and we hadn't even been there yet well if you tree trimming's a very very dirty hard job and uh, they're underappreciated on those storms. But at any rate, when we walked into this place, these tree trimmers were already all laid out on their cots. And what this was, was it was military cots. And if you reach to your left and you reach to your right, you'd touch a man laying on a cot. There was just enough space between them. You could walk up and down through them. It's the best they could do is an emergency situation. That's uncomfortable at best, right? But you know, I got used to being uncomfortable as I said in that other video, and I was there for the greenery, not the scenery. So. Made it, to, went over, made it to the showers. Well, all them tree trimmers had got in there and showered before us, and what it was was an open shower room. So imagine there's, you know, six or seven spigots on the wall to your right, and six or seven spigots on the wall to your left. The drains ran down the middle, and there's no doors, there's no walls. It's just there's no modesty, right? You just you just get in there and do what you got to do. And they had some folding chairs set down the middle. You could put your towel on, your shampoo, and whatnot. Well, it looked like a, a damn pig pen in there all the dirt that got washed off there's so many you know 100 men go through there before you that are filthy from working their butts off it was bad it was dirty it was some bad guys just wearing sandals in the shower but anyway so i uh you had to wait in line so i i just kind of went out that night it's already late you worked a long day you know, you're working 16 hour a day so i went out and i strolling around and, and uh you know the gfs and the high, high ups, you know, Steve was more than a GF, but they got a company credit card, company pickup truck, and they put those guys up in hotels wherever they could find them. You know, so I think Steve had one about 45 minutes away and pickup truck. And when I went out there, I was strolling around that parking lot and I seen Steve, the cab light was on in his truck. And he was sitting in that parking lot in his truck. And I figured, oh, he's doing paperwork, doing time. That man's got a lot of work to do. So anyways, night goes on get showered, get some sleep, you're tired, you don't have no problems going to sleep. Get up in the morning and there's like a mutiny going on. There was about probably 50 linemen in the group I was in. Everybody was, they was mad. They was mad about the conditions and the conditions weren't great. But, you know, so 
So we we are uh, in the mornings. You'd go, you'd round everybody up at the back of the at, of uh, Steve's pickup truck. Now you'd have a meeting every day. So all these younger guys and middle aged guys, they're all complaining, which. You know, Steve didn't put up, Steve's uh, like a gentle giant, but he's got a lion underneath the skin. Like, he'll two-check you in a minute. He's not going to let one bad apple mess up the bunch. And uh, he's got the checkbook and the power and the authority to hire and fire at will when he wants. So he kind of sh shuts them down. And then this old whiskered-up lineman, he starts talking. And so he got these two, so it's Steve and him. So these two old ro roosters and... And I could tell by the way Steve was letting him talk that Steve had great respect for him. And I could tell by the way the, the old lineman was talking to Steve that he respected Steve a lot. I didn't know the man. I didn't know any guy there. I didn't know one guy there but Steve. So I didn't know, but I was listening. So the long and the short of it was, was that this guy was really unhappy and he didn't think it was fair. And the grumbling around was that Steve was staying at this hotel 45 minutes away and these conditions were unacceptable and we needed to get out of there. Well, Steve got that man both of his checks after they got done talking, and he went on about his business. Steve told us we had a job to do. We needed to go do it, and when we got it done, we'd get out of there. Meanwhile, he'd be working on a better, better conditions for us. Well, I noticed that Steve's a real well-kept man, so he shaves every day. His shirt's always tucked in. He always wore khaki slacks. Well, I noticed that morning, you know, he had stubble on his face, and I've got this horrible, I almost call it a disease for me. I have a super attention to detail and it's a real pain in the butt well about that time i saw the stubble on his face and i noticed this parking lot's packed full right you couldn't fit another truck in it but i noticed his truck was in the same spot that it was when i saw it that night what that man didn't know and what none of them guys knew and what steve didn't tell him when steve was leading from the front and steve slept in his truck that night in that parking lot and every other night that we were there and he never went to that nice motel room he never went to that warm shower and he ate the same food we ate and he slept in worse conditions than we did because he was in his truck. And people, let me tell you, that man's got my respect. He leads from the front and that's why he's got the repu reputation he has. If you went to Fairbanks, Alaska in the mid 2000s and you said Steve Walker's name on a job site, they'd know exactly who you was talking about.